Hello, Fly Family. It's me, your pal, your bestie, the Fly Girl T. Yes. And today, this video is a little different than normal. So, today, we are going to talk about self love, but I'm going to teach you nine, nine different ways of how I fell back in love with myself, and you can do this too. So, without further ado, let's jump into it. So, how do you fall in love with yourself? Well, there's going to be nine different ways, but under three different categories, right? So the first way is physically. So how do I fall back in love with myself? Physically. I actually got aware of my senses, really just tapping into sensations and feelings, particularly touch, whether it was going out in nature and just feeling the wind across my skin or hugging myself or just really being in tune with my sense of touch, relaxing, resting, really being in tune with my comfort, watching what you're eating, eating better foods, drinking more water, taking care of your body. That is a great way to start loving yourself all over again because guess what? It's going to show when you take care of yourself and when you don't take care of yourself. And this is an ongoing process for me, but I've learned that when you take better care of yourself, not only your body will thank you, you watch how everything else will just flow around you because you are taking care of yourself and you're holding yourself to a higher esteem. Next, move your body. So it kind of goes along with number two is basically, you know, exercising some form of dancing, getting back into your feminine energy, ladies, really taking care of that body by moving it around and really just being one with everything around you, but also engaging some activity that gets you moving and it can help get you out of that rut, especially if you've been stuck and complacent. The next category is mentally, and I want to start with step number four, quiet time. Have quiet time for yourself. Enjoy just being in the company of just yourself, whether it's a quiet room, maybe everybody's asleep and you just want to just mellow out and just have your thoughts to yourself. Have some quiet time. That may require you to take some vacations. That may require you to just even just be in the car, whatever it is. Have some quiet time, no music, no nothing. Or maybe it might be kind of minimal. You might just listen to music, but just be silent with your thoughts. Have quiet time. Strengthen and sharpen your mind. This is number five. Strengthen and sharpen your mind. You want to make sure that you are really strengthening and sharpening your mind every day. Whether it's some brain teasers, some thinking activities, read some great books, learn from your favorite YouTubers, and not just learning about celebrity gossip or just junk food type of stuff, but really like learning how to manage your money better or learning how to be better in tune with your feelings. Learn constructive things, strengthen and sharpen your mind. You can also learn from other people around you. And also sometimes that time alone can help teach you things about yourself. Also minimize those negative thoughts and beliefs. You really want to get rid of those negative thoughts and beliefs. Now, don't worry, I know it is easier said than done. But if you're saying, I can't have this, I can't afford this, no. Flip the script and turn them into positive things. I have this, I can afford this, I have that new job, I have that love of my life. And turn it into gratitude, I'm thankful for having good health, I am thankful for that new car that's coming, I'm thankful all around, even when you don't have it. Now, we're going to get to the emotionally and spiritually part, and this is going to now be the last few steps. Process your emotions in real time. Understand what you're feeling, go through it, deal with it, but don't be stuck there. And a lot of times, this really counts for our negative emotions. You're gonna feel things as a human, whether it's anger, sadness, acknowledge it, feel it, but don't stay there for long. It's okay to have these feelings. But also, you can relish in the positive ones. But we know that every day is not always going to be sunny. But you're just being hopeful that eventually the sun will come out again. Process your emotions in real time, especially the negative ones. Feel it, reel in it, but do not stay in it. Give yourself grace. 
Give yourself grace to make mistakes and to fall. Be gentle with yourself. Sometimes things don't go the way you want. You could have done this better. You could have done that better. If I worked a little harder, if I acted sooner. A lot of times it's very easy to beat ourselves up when we do just that. But give yourself enough grace to come back up, to learn, to understand how you can improve, but also pat yourself on the back on what you did well. And lastly, I say that this is the most important of all. And I think this is really paramount to all of the nine steps, but it really hits home. And that for me is spending time with God. When I spend time with God, I learn more about myself spiritually. I learn more about him spiritually. And I look at the areas of my life where I know that I need fine tuning, but also where I'm blessed at. And also spending time with God allows you to really put things into perspective. For instance, you read your Bible when you meditate and focus on certain scriptures and apply them to your life. For me, the biggest season in my life is learning how to give God control. And I've been struggling with the issue of control and a lot of times with patience. But I love this one prayer. You guys maybe know it. It's been drilled into your head a thousand times for all my Christians out there. And that is the serenity prayer. And it goes a little something like this. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That alone, that alone right there helps you to differentiate and navigate and also to really separate what is a human issue, what's a God issue. A wise woman once said, and I heard her over the phone, you have to know what is a human issue and a God issue. The things that are in your control versus the things that are not. Ultimately, the control goes back to the one who has it, and that is God. Now for you, I know there's people out there that may not be Christians or believe in higher powers, but whatever that source looks like for you, whatever you believe in or whomever you believe in, turn that energy back into, I can focus on the things that I control versus the things that I can. Sum that all up for yourself and that will give you the peace and the understanding to not only navigate this life, but to thrive rather than survive. So. I just want to close it with this. Self-love is not a mere destination, but rather it is a journey. And I know it is cliche, but it is important to know that it just is not a pit stop, nor just the final stop. The final stop is when you go and you leave this earth. But truly, when you keep loving yourself day in through day out, enjoy the ride, enjoy the journey, and enjoy and trust the process and the one who holds the process. But guys, that is it. I truly hope that you have learned something from this, you reap something from this, and that you really, really apply all of these things into your life. And also, let me know what has helped you. Have some of these principles helped you? What worked for you? How did you fall back in love with yourself? All right? But until then, you guys, until next time, stay true, stay you, stay fly. I love you all. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you. And I want you to win each and every day the Fly Girl way. And it's me, the Fly Girl T. Until then, take care. Bye bye. We can do it,